Get your popcorn ready because it's time for a movie watching party on Asteroid G. You're listening to Not So Live from Asteroid G. I'm Mike Finkelstein. With me, as always, is... Yep, Josh Schaefer. And Queen B. And today we are going to be discussing the Netflix series The Witcher. So, I mean, let's get this out of the way right now. Let's all make a pun about throw a coin to your something. I know we want to. You can throw a coin to me. I'll take it. So, the uh, second season of The Witcher came out recently. And I think it's actually worth doing a little bit of a watch party about this one. Because... It's interesting in how it's structured in comparison to the first season. And I also don't feel like, in general, it was as successful as the first season. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I think, I think that it was less... Um, now, it was good. Don't get me wrong. I liked it. Um, and I, as I've said, Henry Cavill, I've, I've never really been a huge fan of Henry Cavill until I saw him in The Witcher. And then I've gone back and seen everything else he was in prior that I hated him in and I now like him. Mm -hmm. So it's something about that character that he does that just makes me go, wow, I, I just really like him now. Mm -hmm. I didn't before, but now I do. Um, but I think that season two was less um, uh, plot building. And I think that's why, you know, if, if you haven't read the books, which I haven't, <laughs> um, and if you're looking for you've gotten to the meat of the story. It was basically telling the meat of the story in season two. So it's like, or whatever the book number this would be, but it's now you're not trying to, Oh, I hope he meets or, you know, I hope he figures it out or something like that. It's more of now he has his child surprise and he has to tie kind of help teach her the way that he wants her to be. And now he has to, now he has to, he's forced to protect her. And so I think for a lot of people, it was like, eh, I don't know if he's really dad material, that kind of thing. So, I, I didn't you know. I didn't have a problem with that. I felt like the character building between him and Siri worked great on this second season. My issue is, and I think this is based on solely on structure and in comparison to other fantasy shows. The Witcher in its first season had a really intriguing hook that kind of played out across its 10 episodes and really didn't come together until three or four episodes in, which was the three main characters, Yennefer, uh, Geralt, and Ciri, going in order of where they are on the timeline, have they pop in at different points of the timeline. And as you follow them, it's not until like halfway in the season that they even slowly start to come together in conjoined storylines. Yennefer's doing her own origin story. Geralt's way into his life, but he has this twist that comes upon him within three or four episodes and then Siri is like 40 30 40 years down from there and has her own thing going on so it's like how everything links up and ties together makes for a very intriguing way of telling the story uh yeah and because the story in that in that first season is very episodic with just single adventures that don't really feel like they're building to something and the main story is like a c plot behind everything else um, it's more intriguing when stuff comes together. Whereas this season, apparently because everyone hated the fact that the first season was so non-linear and told weirdly, uh, is very linear and has a much more quote unquote standard fantasy plot line for a season. Uh, it's very orderly structured, very serialized. Most episodes aren't like one-off stories, but have a large build that they're doing towards it feels like the season lost its energy. Yeah. And and they also lost a lot of the comedic yes. part of it, too, because they only brought, uh, what was his name, Jessic? The Bard. Back in, the Bard. Uh, back in maybe halfway through the season. And I really like him as a character, and I like how he builds upon everything with Geralt and um, Yennefer. And, and the play between those three is awesome. And he was basically the comedy relief that you don't have until the middle of the season. So yeah. he brings out an uh, energy in the show and specifically in Geralt uh, that the character misses. Otherwise, Geralt has some like he's they say the witchers are emotionless, but that's not true. You can tell that from the performance. But like 
Yennefer brings out one thing in Geralt. Ciri brings out that fatherly thing, which Geralt's not good at, but he tries. But the bard, just being a friend of his that wants nothing more than friendship, is something else altogether that I, like, you get the vibe. Geralt isn't used to that. And it makes for a dynamic he's not comfortable with at all. Yeah. 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 Josh? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm still working through the second season, uh-huh. but... Um... I don't know, I think that the first season was kind of had that, like, Tarantino aspect to it, where, yeah, you know, the there were multiple timelines going on at the same time, and then second season is just kind of like, I don't know, there, there's not as much thought behind it, mm-hmm. I guess. I don't know if either of you have watched Before. The Wheel of Time. I have. Okay. No, I have not. I've read it, or some of it. So, this, this is spoilers a little bit for The Wheel of Time as well. Oh. Um, but I'm I, assuming oh, since, I read the, since I read the book, well, push my glasses up. I was going to say, well, the thing is, the book, from what I understand, the show changes enough that if you know the book, you aren't necessarily going to know what happens in the first exactly. season of the show. True enough. But man, I, I'm not going to read the books because there are 14 novels and I'm not that into fantasy. Thank you. Um, <laughs> let's just be honest about this. But... The thing that struck me while watching, because I, I was watching Wheel of Time the whole time it was down, like coming out to Amazon, and then right smack in the middle of it, The Witcher season two drops, and Becky said this to me while we were watching it, and I had to agree. And then the further we got into the Wheel of Time, the more I felt this. The two shows feel interchangeable, and that is in large part because they're both playing with very standard fantasy tropes and not actually treading a lot of new ground. Yeah. Now, is that is that because of the people who are creating the shows, which one is Netflix and one is HBO? Amazon. Or, is, or Amazon, I apologize, Amazon. Um, or is that because just fantasy in itself is always written that way? Yes, on both accounts to a certain extent. Um, so, I mean, if we want to get really, like, push our glasses up our nose about this... The fantasy genre pretty much changed the second Lord of the Rings came out. Uh, Peter Jackson redefined the genre, and he set the standard for what fantasy is supposed to aspire to. Most things that came out after that were trying to be the next Lord of the Rings. And that didn't change until Game of Thrones, which added in violence and lots of character death and, you know, all sorts of things that you couldn't do in a PG-rated fantasy film about Tolkien. Um... And then so a lot of shows tried, that came out after that wanted to be the next Game of Thrones, and which the only one that did at all well in differentiating itself but still kind of following that was the first season of The Witcher. You could see that they drew inspiration from what Game of Thrones was willing to do, the violence, the graphicness of it, the nudity, um, but take it in a different direction, something that had its own thrust to it with characters that essentially had plot armor, uh, which Game of Thrones didn't until its last couple of seasons. So, like, like you could see Witcher was kind of influenced by Game of Thrones, kind of influenced in its sweeping nature by Lord of the Rings, but found its own style. And it kind of feels like Wheel of Time is a muted version of the second season of The Witcher without any of the graphic nudity, which, that's fine, it's not necessary, out a lot of the violence and out a lot of new ideas. And it kind of makes both of them feel like pale imitations of each other in a way. Well, yeah, it does make you feel like both of these stories could be in the same world. Yeah. And the story is being told by a similar narrator. Yeah. The, the, um, it, it, it's that uh, um, the two different bards see, it's seeing the same story, telling it each with their own style. I mean, I didn't dislike The Wheel of Time. No. I actually kind of liked it. I, it I thought it was done very well, and it was nice to see... Um, who's the lead actress? Rose? Is her name Rose? Uh, Rosamund Pike. Rosamund Pike. Girl. That's what I yeah, know her as. Rosamund Pike. There you go. Um, she uh, she did very well, and I like her as this character. It's the first character I've ever liked her in. So, <laughs> well, she normally um, plays badass asshole villains, which I'm okay with. But you're not supposed to like her, you know. <laughs> right, right. And now, and now she's playing a. She's not playing a villain per se, but she no. still has that air of an asshole which i like that immutable quality where she doesn't want to share everything with you right doesn't want to share anything with you um she's she's definitely a type a personality Uh 
Yeah. Um, and she it, wants to believe that she's in control all the time, which yep. she is obviously not. Not here, no. And, well, and that's that's something else that strikes me. And Josh, I'm sorry if you like uh, you uh, are, are going to go watch Wheel of Time and some of these details aren't in here. And, of course, it's spoilers mm-hmm. for everyone else, which it's a watch party for The Witcher and now Wheel of Time. So you're just going to have to live with that. Um, the, <laughs> there's this aspect to it that struck me. Okay, so you've got a uh, wise witch who is traveling around, finds very special person who could make or re-break the world, basically. Uh, Wise Witch, also at the end of Wheel of Time's first season, loses her powers, and that's basically what happens at the end of first season of Witcher as well, because Yennefer is spending all of season two trying to get her powers back. You know, you've got very clearly defined good and evil, dark and light, and everything else. Like, Witcher, like, so Witcher played with some of these tropes, but they played with it in such a way in the first season that made it feel like they were reinventing aspects because of the perspective of the character. You had a guy as the lead character who wouldn't traditionally be your hero. He'd be like the the side character Aragorn that was helping the hobbits, not the hobbit, basically, you know? So, I kind of feel like the first season of Witcher was interesting. The second season of Witcher is now all about Ciri. She's, to use our terminology there, she's now our hobbit, and all the stuff that was really interesting is kind of pushed off to the side, and it feels more generic, which is exactly what Wheel of Time is. Wheel of Time is a huge series, and it's a show based on this huge series. This huge series helped to redefine fantasy fiction, and so now we have this uh, all sorts of TV shows and movies that have been inspired by Wheel of Time books, and now you have a show that comes out, and it feels inspired by, inspired by, or a photocopy of a photocopy, and it just doesn't feel fresh. It's fine, but not fresh. Yeah, I I would agree. Yeah. It's very, it's very. Um, we've seen this before. Generic in a way. Yeah. 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 That's my problem. Like, I think the actors are good. The the, the what action we get's pretty interesting. The magic casting in Wheel of Time is interesting, and I do like the uh, as you said, Rosamund Pike's character, uh, Moraine. I think. Yes, Moraine. Her, her watcher or whatever his name is, Warder. Uh, there's there's some really interesting aspects to it, but it doesn't feel like it's found itself yet. No, and, and you know, some shows are going to be like that anyway. Yep. Yep. Um, I, I do like the fact that they don't, they aren't afraid to hurt Rain. Or like, anyone. She almost dies a handful of times. So, yep. you know, it's like, good, kick her when she's down. <laughs> um, I mean, and they do, they really do. Uh, they they aren't afraid to kill people, which is nice, and it, and it's kind of like what I like about Witcher too, is that they are not afraid to kill people off, um, yeah. if they're not worthy to the story. So yeah, uh, as I said, there's plot armor on certain characters in The Witcher. You know these people are going to survive season to season because they're the main focus. But everyone else around them is free to just die left and right, and it is kind of interesting in that regard. Yeah. So. Um, but I think they need to, you know, one of the things I don't like about Siri is that she's kind of like a whiny teenager. But yes. again, I guess that is the Realistic. character. She's a yeah. whiny teenager. Yeah. So they do. They need to push. They need to push in third season of Witcher further. And they need to find some of that spark that's missing. Obviously, keep the bard around because having him relegated to the sideline for most of the season did not help. Um, yeah. I like I kind of feel like the second season proved that the whole thing between Yennefer and Geralt, like, the love story, doesn't really play. Um, Because I felt like the characters were more interesting without that going on in the background. Um, But it's also this thing of, like, just in general, create a spark to your show now that you have Ciri in this position, and don't just keep building towards some bigger conflict. Because that was tedious. The the triangle was tedious? Not the triangle. The whole, like, what's going on? What's this dark witch in the background who's, like, slowly working over the course of this entire season? I found the main thrust of this season to be tedious of The Witcher 2. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. That's just me. Tedious <laughs> is a good word for it. Yeah. So, again, yeah. it's not bad. And I think if this had been the first season, you know, just a little, like, episode or two to prelim into it, we'd probably still love this show. But the first season of The Witcher is so good and so different that to have something like this feels like a letdown. Well, I also do a lot of, you know, I give them a lot for going back during COVID to 
to actually film this and stuff like that too. So who knows what could have gotten knocked around or changed or whatever oh, for yeah. the sake of uh, a pandemic. So yeah. and, and you don't I'm going to give them some leeway. We'll see what happens in yeah. season three. I think it's been picked up for another two seasons anyway. So we know we're going to get at least a, to a season four. Yeah, and you don't know you don't know whether it was the producers or Netflix that said we need to change things up and get rid of some of the non-linear aspects of it, which I thought was the best part. Uh, maybe they said we need to make it more serialized. You know, you never know how much they listen to internet fans or not when they designed this one. But like, if they're listening to this podcast, and I assume they are because everyone does, um, <laughs> then obviously they're going to take our input and create something a little more vibrant for the third season. You know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Any other thoughts on The Witcher besides, ooh, Geralt, hello. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think that uh, Josh has seen it all in Not its all entirety it. yet. Uh, so. but, I mean, I know I've said this about everything, but I'm reading the books. <laughs> so, so you know what I happened. Like 20 years ago. Okay. So, so I, I think we should do an in uh, memoriam for Roach. Oh, poor and... Roach. <laughs> <laughs> can we freeze we will, frame we will, on radio? We will miss you. Josh? So how can we freeze frame on radio? Right. <laughs> Free, fr locked up. Moment of silence for the poor horse. <laughs> oh. Okay. <sighs> that All was right. really sad. Yep. And with that, uh, this has been Not So Live from Astro G. I'm Mike. Didn't kill a horse. Finkelstein. Josh probably didn't kill a horse, Fingelstein. <laughs> and Queen Bee, go ahead and make glue. <laughs> and we will see you guys next time. <laughs>